What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the CP Podcast. Man, I'm your host, CP, and this is the CP Podcast, where we talk about the shit that CP want to talk about. If you don't want to talk about the shit CP want to talk about, uh, you can get the fuck on. Now, uh, I was in the comments last week, and uh, people were saying shit like, you should stick to conspiracies. What did we talk about last week? What are they doing Life, about? college, shit like that. But my thing is this. No, no, we don't. Like, <laughs> like, I, I, like, like, I don't think people understand that this podcast is not, this ain't, I'm not trying to get famous doing this. Like, I already have shit that I do that in. Like, this is me talking about the shit that I really want to talk about with people who I want to talk about it with. And that's it. Like, mm-hmm. I seeked out Maya because she was the smartest person over here. We did, like, shows and shit, and she was like, like big brain type of, and I was like, yeah, I, I want her on the pocket. And 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 Amir, he he did the thing, and then he became that 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 voice of like, like a like a certain generation that's like, wow, you're not like I'm literally like past or before that generation. It was like Amir is way more like, you know, what uh, are the kids talking about yeah, these days? What the kids is t- yeah, like he's like tapped in. So, yeah, but other than that, it's like, dog. So sometimes we're going to talk about shit that's like not space and aliens. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be like life because guess what? What we saw uh, a few months ago on that big ass chart was that all these conspiracies tie in. Like they're like they're all a part of the human experience and how it affects us. Because if it's not, then we really shouldn't be giving a fuck about it. But all these things that we talk about tie into our human experience somehow, some way. Therefore, the whole human experience, the human being part of it, is a conspiracy. Yeah, this shit all ties into your quality of life. Everything about this affects our life if we're not alone in the universe that's a big ass deal if they're trying to poison our food that's a big ass Mm -hmm. deal if they're mind controlling us with 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 ads and fucking mk ultra type shit and that's a big ass deal because it affects how we live Mm -hmm. so it's like yo grow the fuck up like i don't i don't i don't need a million views on this shit i really don't so it's like yeah suck my dick and um don't tell us what the fuck to talk about, please, because we're not on that shit. Like, I promise you, like I don't, I don't, I really don't care. Like we're gonna talk about vacuum cleaners. If I do, you have a Dyson? No, I have a Dyson, and and, oh. and I got a cordless Dyson too. I used to have one of them ones with the three things at the top, one of them big booty Dysons, and them bitches is cool. But uh, goddamn, pause. But this motherfucker can suck some shit. Whatever. Anyway, um, and to my right in the fight against anything that's not right. Is uh is is Maya? Hi, CB. How you doing? Man, I'm pissed off about some comments, but I feel better now. I had to get that off my chest. I was driving here today, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> listening so to li- listening to motherfucking Bone Crusher. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't never scared. Big ass blood. Like I ain't never scared. I don't know why. Anyway, um, Roman's here. He's in the other room, Man, yeah. Can I, and I, we're not bringing him out. But can I just say, and I don't want to sound like he's a snake. Like we're not going to bring him out because <laughs> he's in the back. No, but um, he's chilling. We're not going to exploit our guy. But he's so beautiful, man. I got a chance to hang with Roman last week. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, he needs to be in, like, Coles commercials. Like, you need to put this dude in, like, some Coles commercials or, like, you know, like, uh, what else? What else is cute? Um, he could be like a Keebler elf for Halloween. I got ideas for his Halloween costume. <laughs> like he could be some shit. Anyway, uh, that's our guy, man. Roman is here. He's doing well. So we don't got to ask this week because he's here. So I saw him. And then, uh, you know what? That 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 corner be looking so dark all the time <laughs> because Amir wears all black. All and, and it's like I've never even seen it lit up. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Leah. So, uh, okay, first of all, um, relax, everybody. It's not a 1-900 number. She's like, hi, it's Leah with an L as in lick. <laughs> Leah. Like, I was very, like, you know. But, no, Leah is very cool. I'll give um, you that number after the show. <laughs> you do do those burlesque shows. I do do comedy burlesque. See? What? Yes. I didn't even know. Why is there comedy burlesque? Why shouldn't Why there be? I mean, I, not in a bad way, but it's like, what is... And I'm sorry, that, that, was, that was rude. To say it like that, but like, what is a burlesque show? Isn't that like Ule Vuvu Shay Yeah, it's the art of the tease. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's like burlesque is like before stripping. And no, you do strip, but we have pasties on. 
so you don't see any nipple. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. So that's before yeah. stripping. I feel yeah. like I feel like it's levels to stripping. I feel like topless bar is like entry level strip club. Like if if your husband is going to a topless bar, like relax. Like he's not a scumbag. This is some random titties. Most of them spaced out completely, like cock eye lizard titties. Right, like straight up chameleon eye titties walk around the club. Like this is not most of the time we're, we're there for the wings and the game might be on. Titties plus the game is a different experience. It's it's like three D, you know, especially if they have some double Ds and it's like three D diddy. But that's entry level, right? Then you move on to strip clubs where it's no liquor, mm. but it's straight up nudity, right? So it's straight up butt nakedness. Right now, these are a little freaky because why your man in there where they don't have no drinks? He in there drinking <laughs> <laughs> drinking pineapple juice and cranberry juice, looking at butt naked women. That's but then you got the ones that are past that. These are the anything goes strip clubs. This is where they're not supposed to get anything but topless. But don't nobody give a fuck about that. And a bordello. What's that? Uh, that's just like a house of... Uh... Nah, nah, it's different. Like, you can't just be like fucking in the middle of the place. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it don't go down like that. But it's like, these are a different type of... Um, different type of strip club, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, just know the level sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain strip clubs where it's like, I will fall asleep in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up, I'll be like, man, I'm not looking at these space out ass titties. Like, just... It, it just be like, titty, rib cage. Titty, you, you know what I'm saying? Or if it's not a rib case, it'd be like a small commercial break in the middle. Of it. It, it don't be, they never put them together. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> it's like, dog, did y'all take a picture of where her titties was before y'all put the fake ones in? Because, <laughs> whatever. Right? Whatever. Whatever. Because, I mean, some dudes out here getting muscle implants and they look like Meteor Man. Those look really weird. You ever seen Meteor Man? Go back and pull up Meteor Man, please, and look at the muscles that Meteor Man had. Robert Townsend played Meteor Man. And look at the muscles that they had in this man's uniform. Oh, this is like the standard superhero. Zoom in to his arms. Let's go to this one. Yeah, it's pads. That's just pads. You know how skinny his arm gotta be? The pad is twisted to the front. I was just gonna say, it's falling. <laughs> Have you seen this dude? Yeah. This That's guy. implants? He keeps injecting stuff into himself. And it's like, you know, Brazilian butt, like silicone stuff. Yeah. So he keeps injecting that into his arms. I ain't gonna lie. As a man, you know what this made me want to do? Beat his ass. Like, to walk up <laughs> to him and just... Krush, krush. And he like, what's going on? Krush. Just like to show him, like, bro, you don't have to do this, man. Look at me. Regular arms. Fucking you up. <laughs> Damn, scroll down. Yeah, I want to fight all these niggas because it's like it just look fun, it's and shame, the dude. footage would be crazy. It doesn't matter. CPU beating the shit out this big buff ass nigga outside. You know what that do to your rep? That nigga was swole. I beat his ass. Cause they have to remove it because um, it's rotting in there. Yeah, man, this look crazy. Or I just want to just kick him in his chest. Poof, like three hundred. His arms might fall off though. Like it's so gross. Oh, but the man. The rest of him is so not strong. Regular. <laughs> Just Duh. like regular dude. And look at his face. Like like he about to do some damage. Like, man, please, dog. So anyway, what are we talking about today? man? We, we, I, we got a lot to talk about. So that eclipse just happened. That eclipse was... Just happened yesterday. Now the world supposed to be over today. Uh, I went out you... and got a lot of shit. I'm, I'm taking it back, too. Are, are you joking? I got a generator. You seriously got a generator? All right, listen. Why are you going? I don't like. I mean, how you we got me. one, but we got one just in general, not for the eclipse. Okay, so first of all, chill out. Let me tell you what I got. I got this like this this uh this forty eight hundred hour electric power bank, and so it has like all these high level plugs. I could like plug up my freezer to it. Oh, that's good. And and so what I can do, I, I got two of them. My plan was to. Uh, use them both to 50%, right? And then plug one to the other one, let it charge that one 100%, and then start working off of that until I get them. You know what I'm saying? Like, basically, be able to reuse the power on each. 
Mm, I wonder if that would work. It would work for like a third time. Mm-hmm. I would get a third use and that would be it. Right. Um, but so then I was also thinking about, okay, taking the intervals, right? So I, I would have my freezer plugged up to it to freeze everything. Let's say like three hours. Then I would take it off of there. And then I can go run something else because it'll take time for that to thaw. It's just mm-hmm. like, dog, just trying to think about all kind of shit. Now I just got fucking hella power at the crib. Well, they say you're supposed to have two weeks worth of everything just in case. So if right. there's an earthquake, FEMA's like, yo, you might be on your own for two weeks. After that, we'll figure out a way to come help you. But that that's the number. As long as you have two weeks worth of stuff. So I feel like I, we definitely, everybody got two weeks worth of shit. You should. The problem is that a lot of that shit you don't be wanting. Like them cans of beans, you just got them in the cover. Like, I'm never eating this shit. But if some shit go down, you be like, this is, this is delicious. You know what I'm saying? So you got a little shit like that. Noodles and hella little shit that I don't, you know what I'm saying? You need the water for the noodles. Keep that in mind. Mmm. Damn. You need extra water for drinking and for noodles. They say you can fill up your uh, bathtub, mm-hmm. like immediately fill up your bathtub, and that'll be like your cleaning water and the other stuff you can eat with. Um, so, I mean, okay. I wouldn't go overboard. I would just be like, yeah, two weeks just in case, and then maybe one generator. Hmm, how can I eat them noodles dry? No, people lost their mind for the eclipse. This was a, this was a tweet from Marjorie Taylor Greene said, God is sending America strong signals to tell us to repent, earthquakes and eclipses, and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. And then the community note is perfect. Because- Monday's eclipse was predicted hundreds of years ago. It would not have been caused by contemporary actions. Mm-hmm. Earthquakes occur naturally, naturally and happen uh, on average more than 30 times a day across the world. Although many are too subtle to feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I be feeling sometimes. You ever feel it like, yo, that felt crazy, but it was not, it's just like, you know, it's not anything like registered, but unless you look it up and be like, it was a 1.2. Yeah, yeah. But like, you be feeling shit like, hell yeah. Yeah, man, people just, people are, man, people will take any excuse to be like, oh, this shit is hitting the fan. Like, people want God to come back so bad. You ever look at your grandma praying? <laughs> and be like, you would fucking shit your girdle if 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 the devil walked in this bitch. You swear to God, you think you you could pray some shit away if the devil walked in here, grandma would be like, oh, <laughs> well, like what would she do? Equally, she would be afraid of if Jesus walked in there, bitch. Like you think, like dog, like people be nervous to see they crush. You think Jesus walking this bitch, knowing you, hello Maya, I know everything. You be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like not you, but I'm just saying like. Our grannies, man, please. Grannies will fuck around and just start passing away, just start dying <laughs> off of sheer fear. It'd be just, just a bunch of grannies hitting pews in church. If Jesus walks in that bitch, it'll be a mass. In other news, everyone's granny is gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it'd be. Cause that shit will scare the shit out of them. They be praying so tough. <laughs> Pray well, remind me of hold on. They be they be reminding me of niggas who think they could fight and all they do is walk around all day like I wish somebody would and hitting their hand all hard and then they get into a real fight and they be scared. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say you have to be more careful if Jesus walks in because they say that the Satan will come as an angel of light. He's not gonna come in dressed as Satan. And so if he comes in looking like Jesus, I'm like, oh, you're probably the devil. Wait. See, more shit to piss me off with this. Bu- Listen, okay, so now, so Jesus not gonna come back looking like Uncle Jesse. I, I no, oh, if Jesus God. came back. So now I could have been seeing Jesus a long time ago, and fu- I need to know what he looks like so I don't fucking roast him. He's gonna look like some Middle Eastern dude, like the guy you buy the fuck falafel out of here. He gonna look from. Like, no, he's not. He, he he gonna look like Sterling from This Is Us. That's how Jesus is gonna look. Jesus is gonna look like Sterling. You ever look at Sterling? Be like, why does nigga be smiling even when he's crying? That's some Jesus shit. Sterling be like, oh wait, I know this dude. He's Tahir's friend. Who Jesus? Oh yeah, Sterling. That's Tahir's friend. He comes in sometimes. Oh for real? That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. He's nominated for an Oscar this year. Mm-hmm. What? Look at him. Can you now tell me if Jesus came back? Listen to everybody I told you. You'd be like, Jesus! I'll roast the shit out of Jesus. I'll be like, you kind of <laughs> look like my man from Drumline. 
They say that this is what Jesus looks like, apparently. That's what they say. Nobody knows. Like this dude. Man, this is like the nigga that sell hot dogs outside of Home Depot. Very nice to those people. That could have been Jesus. Just testing you. Man, whatever. If this Jesus, he don't, he don't like niggas anyway. I ain't got time to be like, I, if I walked up and saw that, I was like, oh, okay, never mind. This motherfucker probably drive a Lambo. He don't care about niggas. He, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep it real. Shit, he don't fuck with us. Look at him. I need Jesus to look more like, like a kinder everybody than one of these niggas. Well, this guy, he looks a little, he just looks, he looks kind of scared. Like, what are you doing taking my picture? First of all, what they not going to do is try to make Jesus look like Nipsey a little bit. <gasps> he like Black Sam, low key. Shout out to Black Sam. But yeah, man, come on, man. If Jesus look like Black Sam, that'd be dope. I'd be like, man, word. Black Sam look cool. If Jesus came back and said, I am Jesus, they'd put him in a mental hospital. They There's probably, so many people out man, there screaming. They probably, beat, they, they probably already did that. Mm-hmm. That shit probably happened during Freak Neek. They probably like, get your ass over here. All these freaks and hoes running around, but as soon as I say I'm Jesus, y'all got to lock me up. Well, okay, cool. <laughs> that happened to Jesus. Yeah, it That's happened true. to him back in the Bible. But you know, it probably happened to him every time. Mm-hmm. Every time. He got to get some friends first and like get a page. You know what I'm saying? Get some followers that way, man. Like, Jesus, come holler at me. I could, Don't just run in and say you that because they going to fuck you up. Let's ease into it. Last time he had friends, it didn't work out well for him. Yeah, they lined him up. Somebody just said that. Oh. Yeah. Man. So, yeah, this is it's in the Bible, 2 Corinthians. And do not say? trust. Do not trust if some really shiny angel comes in and says, I am the Savior. It's probably Satan pulling his Satan tricks. Look, I'm not advanced in spiritual warfare. I don't have time for this shit. If somebody comes to me shiny, I'm going with them. No. I'm going with the, Listen, I don't have time. If you if it's beautiful, I'm like, man, this is amazing. I'm out, everybody. Mm-hmm. I'll probably be in hell like, wow, nobody told me. <laughs> <laughs> nobody told me. I was the only nigga who jumped in the ride. Nobody told me. That nigga was shiny as fuck. Nobody else came. Man, whatever. Now, a lot of them are going to fall for it. Don't worry. Cool. Cool. They're gonna be like, oh, we over here, y'all over there with that bummy ass nigga. <laughs> Talking about he Jesus. We we and then come to find out. <laughs> I just, you know what? Can I just say I don't like that story? I don't Which like story? the story of just like, I'm humble and I'm meek. And you'll see in the end that I was who I was. But in the meantime, get your ass beat with me. It's like, bro, that's old, dog. I don't I, I'm sick of that narrative. Oh, sounding really prideful right now. Oh, really? Sounding prideful? really prideful. That's oh, what gets you man. knocked down from heaven. R- really? So, so, so my whole life is supposed to be struggle and flinching from getting hit because uh, I'm not. I didn't write the book. You yeah, act like I wrote the book. I'm I just mean, saying what's in the book. You it, act like you know who wrote the book. I'm telling you that the book seems mighty convenient to keep me being a bitch. And 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 keep very, you know. I'm just saying, it's like, hey, thou shalt be a bitch ass nigga in order to be cool. Yeah, it's like in there somewhere. That's crazy. The meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah, and what a weak ass earth it shall be. You see what you see what Meek out here doing. Meek Mill going crazy. <laughs> what is Meek doing? Uh, meek can have this motherfucker. If if Meek go get this bitch, I'm gone anyway. I ain't got time to be here on Meek's earth. <laughs> Fuck out of here on Earth with Meek. <laughs> Nigga, please take that. All right, let's get let's get Jesus out of here. We'll see you later, man. Yeah, that ain't Jesus. Get out of here, uh, bacon wrapped hot dog man. <laughs> Outside the Laker game. <laughs> to say Marjorie Taylor Greene is so wrong for this tweet and so stupid, and she should have to resign from Congress. That yeah. is some caveman level stuff. Yeah, she got to chill with that. I mean, I ain't gonna lie though. Like the red heifer, you saw that? Yeah, the red heifer prophecy. Now, what's up with that? I'll just let people know, and Leah, you're probably aware of the red heifer prophecy. I didn't seen some fucking red cows my whole life. I haven't seen a red cow. Like, it's been some it red cows. It has to be pure red. And so they have to sacrifice completely red, to, head to tail. And then build this temple. And then the people who build the temple can be purified with the ashes. So that's the only way they get the temple back. What temple? The Israel temple? Uh, yeah. So they're doing all this shit. You talk about the Gaza situation? Well, 
Perhaps. Like, does it tie Perhaps. into that? Because Temple Mount is now where the Al-Aqsa Mosque is, which is the third holiest site in Islam. So in order to rebuild, it, there seems like a lot of land there. Like, they Doesn't it seem both. fucking convenient, though? Like, wow. What? How do you mean, convenient? Okay, so if I'm missing something, so the Israel and Gaza situation, mm -hmm. right? Does that not play into Israel trying to build this temple on this land that... Um, no, it, it's it's the Al-Aqsa Mosque, so it's Temple Mount. And... I, don't know, I don't know what any of that means. That was literally like eight syllables that you just hit at me. I'm oh, like, my bad. L I, but nah. I was like, oh, shit. it's like a piano you're playing at me right now. Uh, so basically, the temple used to be there, right. and the temple hasn't been there for a while. But what is there is a mosque, which they uh, Hamas really values. In fact, they named their television station Al Aqsa TV. Um, so there are some very, very religious Jewish people in Israel who do want to rebuild the temple, but a lot of them, I don't think they care one way or the other because they're not overly religious. But what is this temple? And what did it have to do with the eclipse and this red heifer? I don't know what the eclipse has to do with anything. I'm just going to say that. I, I think we're overvaluing this eclipse completely. I agree. because, But like when I was on YouTube, going down my little, my little, my little, my little weed, going on there um it was like the eclipse is coming the red heifer they found you know the eclipse plus the red heifer the cities of all the it's like an x and i was like yo oh my god bro let me go grocery shopping now i can't just because jesus ain't coming straight to my career he gonna come down it's probably be two weeks before he get to my house i gotta eat shit well there was talk that they are trying to get the red heifer and they're importing I, a lot of them I from Texas. That, yeah, they they're they're looking at a bunch of them because they have to examine it, make sure it doesn't have a single black or white hair on it. It's gonna be completely red. Uh, and then, so I've heard rumors, and I haven't been able to confirm this. This is just online rumors that maybe that sparked Moss to go forward, but it could just be, could just be rumors. You know what I mean? That sparked who to go forward? Hamas to attack. Right. To That's start what I'm saying. Like, thing. doesn't it seem like, man, like what, well, like this? Like these cows ain't babies. They've been born like this. This, this it's, it's been like probably like a like like a little under a year old now. From what I saw on the video, the videos they had of those heifers, they were some big bitches. They wasn't no. Yeah, and I thought they had one that was perfect red. I think they did. They examined all the hairs, but I'm like, nah. It could have had a hair in his ear or something. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Is like, can we can we bring up what a red heifer looks like? Oh sure. Leah, do you have an opinion on this at all? You know, uh, my bat mitzvah Torah portion was about the red heifer. Ooh. Really? I know, and I wish that I could tell you I remember everything from it. And I Tell don't. us in Hebrew. Oh, God, that was so long ago. <laughs> wow. I don't remember. So like, it's really like a point that gets it talked about. Thing, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it like it's just like, you know, going to church where you read a portion for the week and that just so happened that my bat mitzvah was this this story. Mm. Did they really believe it or is it just like a thing to say? I, I mean, isn't it all a metaphor? <laughs> Some seem you to believe it. You think it is until they they start bringing up red all beef patties out of Texas. You're like, oh shit. Can you, can you, can you click that one up there? This one? Yeah. So this is, this is kind of like what I was pulling up. Oh, this is older than eight years old. So this is so they do want to breed a red heifer so that they can rebuild uh, the temple. So they've been trying, but they haven't been able to find one. And then they just been finding them in Texas now. You think people have been dying them? I think that they are engineering them because there are a lot of evangelicals in Texas that are kind of all in for this uh, final prophecy. But see, my thing is this though, like whether you make it or it comes naturally, does that matter in the regard of when it's supposed I mean, because I guess if everything is on this, on this timeline of hear me out, there's two ways that this, this kind of shit goes. Either it's on a timeline of when it happens naturally, it'll happen. Or is it like when they figure it out, when God permits it to be born? Cause like, 
It ain't nothing that, that they can do on the first try. They can keep trying it, but never get it for years. When they finally get it, is that the one that it's time for? Or are them tampering with it, trying to speed up the time? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. really, like, no, it's going to be a natural red heifer born that y'all got to go find. Isn't it? It, it? We're kind of pushing it in that direction, but it's still naturally born. It's not like it's a... Uh... It's not like it's, you know, using CRISPR to genetically engineer it. They're just breeding them, selective breeding for redness. So it's kind of a loophole, maybe. But I don't think God's going to come and intervene because he didn't come and intervene many other times. Any other time. Yeah, he, he didn't really come out. In the Bible, it says he did, but I don't know. Somebody knows some. They didn't even have him come in Avengers Endgame when Thanos snapped everybody away. And there was a lot of motherfuckers who didn't have shit to do with that. And I feel like that, that's the perfect time for God to be like, hey, everybody chill. You can't snap half my congregation away. But no. We just went off. I'm like, where is God at? All right. Um, yeah. So this red heifer shit was apparently some shit that they were talking about was taking place in yeah. the last war. Which is, you know, they're saying, like, the shit about to get the fan, apparently. They got this red heifer. They have it on the way to Israel. Like, the last I heard, a couple of days ago, they have it. They have the one. That is going to be interesting. Because uh, there is a mosque currently there. And uh, they don't quite get along. Mm. There's a lot going on in Temple Mount. I am not uh, super religious like that. So if we end up going to war over some Bible prophecy, I'll be a little bit tiffed. Same. Little tiffed. I'll just say that. That's how all those wars are starting, though. And last I heard, Iran was not going to attack Israel directly. They were going to do it through proxies. And there was a concern that they would attack directly. But kind of hold off that uh, major war in the region for a little while. See, that's one of those things where it's like... You don't even know. Like, this is so, like, I don't want to call it, like, primitive. It's primitive. You know what I'm saying? I think it's primitive. Okay, so maybe, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to, this is not a part of my religion, so I don't want to. We don't you know, insult right? you. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to, but it's like, Culture it's one of those things where it's like, we look at our society and they like to make us think that we're so, so, so advanced and that, you know, we're the most advanced society. That's always the lie that they try to feed you. We're the most advanced society ever. But like the things that matter, the absolute things that matter to the people who know the most be shit like this, where it has nothing to do with the technology. And it's all to do with these prophecies that they believe are coming true. And it's all just natural things. This tree will grow here. This fruit will bear. These cicadas will grow. This, And it's like, the question is not about the AI all the time, right? And the extraterrestrial shit. We're also under the tutelage of a group of people who are not only following the Bible to know our next steps, but they're trying to make shit in the Bible happen on purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the problem with religious zealots because they are motivated in a way that most of us simply are not. So the evangelicals, they're a powerful group. You never want to dismiss them, even though people do a lot, but they'll die for what they believe in. They'll die for Jesus or the idea of Jesus. The same thing with these Hamas, these terrorists, they'll die for it. And what's unfortunate, the most unfortunate thing in Israel, and if I'm being offensive, you let me know, is that it seems as though they don't make their religious zealots actually serve in the army. So it's- Israel? Yeah, it's regular, regular people like you. I don't, you well, know. I think it's, it's everybody. They, they make the Jewish people serve in the army, but they're more yeah. secular, but not the religious zealots. They don't, oh. So it seems very unfair that this is a religious war, but the people doing the fighting are regular people yeah, yeah. who are really annoyed by yes. those religious zealots. Some of them. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and it would be the same thing for us if, if God forbid, uh, the evangelicals, which they did. They did with Iraq. They started a war in Iraq, which was supposed to be like a crusade, and then other people had to die for it. And it's like, I don't really care about your book. It's good. It's good for stories. I don't yeah. want to offend anybody. I read it to Roman for stories. It's good, you know, if you're doing writing because they're old tales. But it's like I, I don't need to live and die by this. Right. Right. And 
yeah, that that is something that I never understood. Like, if it's all stories and metaphors, and we read it in an English class for those reasons, mm-hmm. like so because they were good storytelling. You know, if you're living and dying by it, if we have things like the Declaration of Independence that get amended all the time because it's outdated, why can't we do that with this also? I think we should be adding to the Bible. I mean, I've always like, said that. It's, There's been some dope shit happening that we need to talk about. 9-11, that could be in the Bible. Um, you the know, Holocaust 9/11? should be in the Bible, definitely. Nine the Holocaust, o- should be, for sure. Slavery should be in the Bible, y- right? Yeah, but 9-11 should be in the Bible. I think um, these wars, right? Like uh, 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 like the Saudi Arabia War, the 1992 George Bush shit. Like, that was world shit. That should be in the Bible. I think um, fucking... Uh, uh, Roswell, New Mexico should be in the Bible. Mm. There are books that didn't make it into the Bible. Right. But there are books that also were taken out of the Bible. Yeah, like uh, Enoch. Right. So Enoch that, and... that's not in there. And who decided that and why right. didn't they Right. Who make decided it? that and the why? The Council of Nicaea in I believe it was 325 decided what goes in and what doesn't go in. So there are a lot of books like the Dead Sea Scrolls um, mm-hmm. that are just around and have recently been found mm-hmm. and are starting to be pieced together that they're like, why wasn't this in the Bible? And does it contradict things that are in the Bible currently? Sometimes, sometimes it adds to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also the interpretation because you're going back to the original Bible, you're looking at Hebrew, Greek. Who reads those languages? I read Hebrew. You, you read Hebrew? And That's dope. A little bit. Uh-huh. Okay. That's really <laughs> impressive that you can all do that. That is so impressive to me because everyone else just speaks English and you guys like are out here with Hebrew, which... That's like if everyone spoke Greek. Yeah. We yeah. joke that nobody doesn't yeah. speak Greek. I mean, I stopped learning it because I was like, what? when am I going to use this? Israel. <laughs> I've been there one time for birthright. my birthright. And why? I don't need to go back. Yeah. They got olives and shit. They do. They have great food. The food is Best good. Best falafel I've ever had in my life. Really? Oh, yes. Are you vegetarian? No. But you just like falafel? But falafel, yeah. Yeah. So good. I've, I've had falafel with some of my vegetarian friends who is like, oh, let's get some falafel. I'm like, let's get some chicken. You know what I'm saying? But falafel's cool. It's like a, it's like hush puppies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like some it's like some rough hush puppies. All right. Uh, Eric D. said Congo should be in the Bible. Absolutely. There are a lot of things. Um... You know what I'm saying? Like things that have happened that I think that a civilization preceding us or after us, not preceding, but after us, would need to know. Like some important stuff has happened. LeBron could go in the Bible. Michael Mm, Jordan could go in the Bible. Like David and Goliath. Yeah, but just like... Goliath. You know, um, just, yeah, cool shit. Martin Luther King, something like that goes in the Bible, maybe. Yeah, well, Jefferson was writing a Bible where he was just taking out all of the supernatural stuff. So it was it was like a secular Bible. Because the Founding Fathers were very much not superstitious, religious like that. I think that those are the ones who started to get us into the mindset that a lot of these things are ridiculous. Like that time period right there, those the, the you know those motherfuckers that that's on the back of the two dollar bill, like those like I feel like they were kind of stupid, like they didn't really they they didn't there was a period of them that are like our early kind of like our first real like industrial businessy type of situations and we handled it horribly. And we got way better with it as time goes. But to look back at how they kind of view stuff, very meat heady, very like this is, you know, like you feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if what I'm saying is the correct verbiage, but it's like this shit, like, you know, shit got a little weird around that time. Well, things got things are surprisingly getting normal in colonial America. And then they got kind of weird after the turn of the 18th, uh, 1800s, because Early, early America, things were starting to actually progress. Like, we were dropping a lot of the superstition. There was uh, race mixing in Philadelphia and all this other stuff. But it didn't really work into what that next generation wanted. So I think we actually regressed after that generation died out. But see, the problem that I have with that is that a lot of the superstitious beliefs, um, like, stem in, like, Africa and other countries. And I feel like coming here was like going to, like, a hotel Whereas, like, nobody's home 
right? We can kind of just make this place, you know, a place to kick back. But really, everybody's real shit is back at home. And so, like, well, then what you have is you have everybody's real history back where they're from. And this is just a place where people are, right? And so there's history here that they try to erase. But I feel like acknowledging the supernatural parts of the land that we're on right now would kind of undermine what the forefathers were trying to build and who, and who they were trying to be. And I think that that's where we fucked up at as a society because there's shit going on spiritually, even with the Native Americans that were here and on this land and knew this land before we had it, and that there are things going on. Like, it could be portals. It could be, you know, um, spiritual, like, very, very mm. heavy spiritual ground that, you know, the stuff that's not taught in school, like meditation and and shit like that, um, psilocybin and shit like that is not taught in schools, but it's such a key component to kind of like the building blocks of like what is to be next, like how the people who thought about what we're what we are to be wrapped up in right now. And this is what they were doing to think about what's next. This is what people, you know, people like high up people um you know chiefs and and shit like that were peach piping and you know there was a lot of other shit going on spiritually you look at what Aleister Crowley was doing like it's shit going on that, Aleister Crowley died alone having had well, so much miserable butt sex but guess what though but guess what i mean that's i guess i get that i mean i'm not trying to we I'm don't want to go into sodomy too much on this podcast right, but, I don't but wanna, he had I'm not a trying to, lot but, of it right but it's trying like, to connect to the other side and but it was it's like, like you don't need that much sodomy for it but it's like the thing is though it's like i don't need to you know whatever he was you know into you know what I'm saying? Oh, he was into it yeah shout out to uh meek and him but what i'm trying to say <laughs> Think what I'm about trying to Meek, you keep bringing well, it up. Well, you keep bringing up what this nigga was doing, so like <laughs> shit. But listen, what I'm trying to say is this: like they still talk about some of the things that he was trying to accomplish today, whether he was fruity or what. It it was it was pain, and he was supposed to like transcend and go to another dimension through this like. But guess pain. what though? The, you ever heard of the game telephone? Mm hmm. And how the message got to us like that right but what they don't talk about is is what year did he die i want to say it was like the 1940s 1940s trying to connect with interdimensional beings 47 he died in 47 1947 you passed away and in your life you were trying to connect with interdimensional beings right and the easiest way to clown somebody after they're gone and can't defend themselves i'm not even i know he was an evil dude apparently quote unquote this, which is what they say. But it's like, I take whatever they tell me with a grain of salt. Because, but he was cruel to certain people. He was right. very cruel he to was, individuals that worked with him. He was racist, apparently, right? All this type of shit. But he was trying to study interdimensional beings in 1947. That's the headline. Whatever he, he was doing with his booty and all that bullshit, I don't know. But he was trying to study interdimensional beings in 1947. There's something to be said about that. Actually, the spirituality movement was a lot bigger in 1900 than it was in like 1975. Right. It, like it, the um, Helena Blavatsky, things like that, Crowley, all of them. There was a huge spiritual Boom movement. Of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it became it became as taboo as. Um, as like uh what you call it uh fuck, i can't think of the word uh, like prohibition prohibition with the liquor right yeah where they outlaw yeah. alcohol it's like you know there was a there was a liquor was the shit to have back then liquor's cool now but you can just go get it now mm -hmm. right it's not really a big deal once they made it untaboo it kind of changed the landscape of what it meant they got rich off of it all this kind of shit but that type of magic or 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 what they would have referred to as magic right like what we can kind of identify now just like our ancestors or or the hieroglyphs calling certain stuff stuff that they didn't have words for and now that we have a better understanding of these things we can go back and look at their teachings and be like this is what they came in contact with this is what it was Right, mm. Alistair, Alistair Crowley ran into a demon. Maybe he it was a it was a sodomy demon or some kind of shit like that. Who knows? But like 
when you go back and look at what where they left off at, it's like, dog, like the research is about pushing us forward. I don't care about who is gay, especially. No, it's not about being gay. It's about the ritual to bring th forward through pain. It's kind of like a sacrifice. Like you have to, you have to put blood to right. seal uh, a magical ritual. But that's something that butt blood. That's something that Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> that's something that is I'm just told to detail. us. And also as a deterrent to even, like, they don't want another Aleister Crowley. They don't want another person coming in trying to study interdimensional beings without it being government sanctioned or some kind of project that the the government has, you know what I'm saying, like, is in on. It's like, oh, I just know how this country, and I, I know this country's relationship with the media Mm -hmm. And I understand how media shapes our opinions of anything. And I also understand how it's like anybody who they don't like never gets good media. It's never like, yeah, we don't fuck with you, but look at what you're doing great in the media. It's never that. I don't think dabbling in magic like this, especially the way Crowley did, is beneficial for the individual. Because at the end of the day, science magic, modern magic works more than any other kind of magic. You could call it tech, you could call it whatever, but our magic works. You like mean, what won the second world war was the bomb. Our magic is not magic though, our magic it's is- science, Our it's magic real. is machine. It's real. It, it works in the material plane, like it really works. But Maya, like there are, there are things that if we were to be allowed to explore without those things being taken out of the curriculums in schools, frowned upon and not funded correctly, if it were not for those things, like maybe like there would be a term for this butt blood demon that you're talking about instead of just us calling it that because we don't know. Like maybe there would be a term for what it means to enter uh, another dimension. Like Alistair Crowley came in contact with a being that when he um, described it in text, they say that it sounds like a gray. Now, could that just be because now I'm going now, full this movie is, conspiracy? Hold on, hold on. This is this is this is before the Roswell crash. Yeah. This is before anybody ever. Um, this is before people were talking about this is what aliens look like. Like he didn't even know what to call this. He was calling it this being. But the way he described it is the same way that people describe gray aliens even to this day. Now, could that be that people now are more open to, and I don't necessarily believe this, but I'm just saying, as like we're talking about a movie here, mm -hmm. that they are more open to demon infestation because of us accepting this. Now, here's a person who I don't necessarily like. Who's that? I'm going to say I don't like him, but I like some of his podcasts. This guy is called Michael Knowles. Now, why I don't personally like him, because it seems as though if he could, he'd run the Inquisition again. I don't know what the Inquisition is. Uh, the Inquisition was a time from, um, so it's from about 1300 to about 1700 where the Catholic Church went looking and hunting for heretics. So they hunted, they hunted in the south of France people who were Gnostics. Uh, they hunted witches. They hunted... They hunted Jewish people or conversos, first generation. Anyway, not a big fan of the Inquisition. Although now it is the Congress of the Holy See, something like that. I forget what exactly it's called right now. And now they do, they hunt pedophiles. So I'm like, uh, now I'm a fan of the Inquisition, whatever. So hold on, right there. They hunt witches, right? Now, from what I understand, based on what the media has taught me since I was a child, is that witches are evil and they should be killed. Um, then you get a teenage witch who's cool, right? And then they want to like draw the kids in. So it's like, it's almost like we grew up learning to hate the evil witch and the witch and the broom and the ugly and the green skin and the, and, and the cone hat. <laughs> then we meet a cute witch who is cool they could talk to her cat and da 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 and you know she's misunderstood just like you and she could be you know a, a outcast just like you da 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 then it's another evil witch this witch wanna mm. this, this witch live in the bottom of the sea and she wanna take away Ariel's legs and rights and it's like the people with the power 
control the media. The media shapes the image and then they just let it go on autopilot. Because what is a witch and how evil are they? And what the fuck is, like, what is a witch? What's a witch? Okay, so a witch, depending on the definition, would be a person. No, not depending on the definition. No, because there are, there are, it could be a Wiccan. What's the, no, okay, I'm, I'm talking about a witch. In the Straight Bible, up. it says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. So this is a person who is trying to usurp the powers of God and to act upon reality using their own willpower. So even the secret, remember the secret that Oprah pushed? The uh, with, manifest uh, things? Um, Jerry and Esther Hicks? Similar. Um, right. uh, Rhonda Byrne, Brian. Oh, right, right, right. And, right, and yeah, she right, said right, um, Byrne, yeah. the law of attraction, da, da, da. That's technically witchcraft. Because witchcraft. you're not supposed to get things by manifesting them. That is witchcraft. You're supposed to ask God. This which, is, is, but, which is manifesting. No, if you if you say Jesus, please give me this. That's okay. If you say I have this, like you, like she said to say in the secret, I'm not knocking anything. I've just researched it to the point where I know uh, the techniques. That is witchcraft. So you can use. There's different kinds of witchcraft. It goes. There's New Age witchcraft. There's Santeria witchcraft. If you go through uh, the kind of stuff that they practice in uh, places in Africa. You have to like seal it with a blood thing, a blood sacrifice. You got to cut off a chicken's head. Um, in the Catholic Church, you say the body and the blood of Christ. So that's giving, uh, and that's the Eucharist, and that's giving Christ power. But it's still blood. It's still a blood, um, blood ritual. And so, and then you have the people who get caught up in it. They're just like the female healers. There's the a lot of the people who were killed uh, during the witch trials were like midwives. So these are just women who understood how to birth a child and men thought it was creepy and uh, were intimidated by it. So they killed a lot of them. Now, this guy, I think you might agree with him if you, um, on this particular aspect, I can't stand his politics and I, I kind of, I'm not going to talk trash about this guy. All I'm just, all I'm saying is he's on uh, a crusade to get people to reject new age, reject witches, and, you know, he's talking to this exorcist about how you, how these people had brought the demons into their lives. He says they okayed occult stuff, which could be something like a Ouija board. And then you can okay the demon to come into your life. This is interesting. If you're interested in this, you can watch Michael Knowles. Take him with a grain of salt because he is very Catholic. What does that mean? It, it, all the, he is like supports the Inquisition kind of Catholic. I think that here's the thing that what I think the law of attraction is, is faith. Mm -hmm. What they teach in the church, quote unquote, is faith. Like you have to believe that you, you have to believe, right? And it's very vague. Understand that these are the same um, uh, religious terms that they use since the 1800s, believe. And, but like, no, it, it, it becomes deeper than that. You have to meet the, meet the, meet the frequency of of the life that you're trying to live. And I've done it before plenty of times. That's spell casting. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's spell casting. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, because it, listen, I'm going to tell you why it's not spell casting. Because in the church, they say have faith. And basically having faith is saying that I know I have it already. You know you have it through God. If it if you doesn't get through God, then it's spell casting, which is fine. Dog, I, I'm that's not like saying judging Simon anything. says or you just do it. Well, if if let's say Simon is the judge and he says you can do it, then it's not against the law. But if you do it without asking the judge, then it is against the law. But do I'm you just understand, saying what the but church do you understand says. What the what the what the conundrum is, I guess, is that like so you're saying that trying to get things, quote unquote, based on what the terms are. Trying to have a life based on yourself is a sin. And your life should be based on God, meaning that everything that you have, should you should say, Jesus, can I have this? Jesus, can I have you, this? You pray to Jesus or you pray to God. Now, here's another thing, an interesting thing, is a lot of what attracted people to Christianity at the beginning, very beginning, early in Egypt, Coptic Christianity, is because they had the best magic, they said. They said, go become a Christian. They got the best magic. Their stuff works. That's why uh, Rome converted to Christianity. Dude was going to have a battle the next day. And he's like, I need to win this battle. If I fly a cross and I win it, that means Jesus 
is real. The magic is real. That God is real. I'm going with them. So a lot of early religion is much more practical than we give it credit for. And it's rooted in a selfish need for wanting something. Yes. Versus, I mean, it's like, and so they tell us that we're made in the image of God, Mm -hmm. which is why we should have faith in ourselves that God gave us the ability to do everything that we're supposed to do. But then we have to ask God for every single thing that we need as if we don't have that ability and if we don't have that faith. Right. So now we have to, and then and then you have to pay. Yeah. Who you, pays? Who are you paying? You pay your tithe. You pay because if, if you're a real Christian and you go to the center of where Jesus is at, where they have the statue of him on, on, on the cross, and you and you pray there, and other people pray for you and around you. So you're paying for this community of people to help amplify your quote unquote wants because you have given it completely up to the frequency of a bunch of people. And and you know, any group of people that are focused on one thing can make something happen. It's in the Bible. If two of you shall pray together, your prayers will be amplified. Jesus said it. Right. So what I'm trying to get is that people distinguish meditation as spell casting and prayer as the real asking. Even though they're very similar. Practically speaking, uh, deep prayer and meditation are very similar. So it's just it's just basically you gotta you gotta go through you gotta go through Jesus. Wow. Uh man, I just I didn't make the rules. I did not make those <laughs> oh, rules. But see, here's the thing: nobody is accusing you of making the rules. But I think that when you hear it out loud, right? When you hear it out loud, I guess it's like, and I guess not thanking Jesus. You got to thank Jesus when things happen. Right. I think that that is something that, oh my God, thank God this came through. Or it didn't come through because some things you'll, you'll ask for and you'll beg for and it won't come through. And then you realize I never wanted that. I didn't want to be with this person. I didn't want that job. It would have just blown up in my face. Thank God for intervening. But like, how dare God intervene with what you're, what you just asked him for and you you will see how much stuff do you get that you realize that you didn't want, mm-hmm. right? And then it's like so who so now God decides how big or small those scenarios are where the things that you don't want you're gonna get, even though some of the best lessons in the world came from things that I thought I wanted. I, I used to think I wanted to write commercials. Mm-hmm. I used to try to make forty thousand dollars a year. Like that was like my goal, right? Like God has a better plan for you. God had a better plan for me, quote unquote. Or I did that and then it wasn't shit and then I needed more. Yeah, I think about this. Um, I see there's a like a cat living under the house in a crawl space and my dog goes nuts and he's always like trying to find it and he thinks if he gets underneath the rug, he can get to the cat under mm-hmm. the house. And so I think that must be, if there is a God, if you believe in God, people at home, that must be what... Uh, higher level being must think of us and we're trying to rip up a little bit of carpet to get what's under the house and we don't understand about floorboards and all this things that we couldn't possibly understand so he just says get away from that carpet you don't know what you're doing i'll Mm. handle it for you i like that i like that metaphor a lot right because you're right we watch this dog who you know is smart Right, smart on its on its plane, mm-hmm. right, and it and it understands the concept of under, over, and under, right. But what it can't fathom is the fact that this floorboard, this floor, is not the same as this rug that can you did not just go to another layer, mm-hmm. right? Like we think that we're going to different dimensions, and we're not. Like there are dimensions that you could go in that completely don't even look like what you think they look like, like and have things there that you cannot quantify. Now. Having said that, don't you want your dog to just not worry about shit? No, because it's his job. Like, I, I, we have an okay, Australian shepherd. Other than what his job is. Well, his job is to protect the family. And so he's, especially uh, if Tony goes away on work, he, he's extra alert. So mailman, don't come near the house. Package guy, don't come near the house. Do Someone messing around. Dog, do, you, do you want your dog to have an opinion about whether or not dogs get adopted or born? Like, do you want your dog to have an opinion about, and this is this is about his race. 
Mm. Do you want your dog to have an opinion about whether or not some dogs get adopted and some dogs get like your dog's whole life watching your dog cry itself to sleep because some dogs get adopted and some dogs get born and bred and, mm. and bred as your dog's God. Are you looking at this dog going, you only going to be here for about eight years, buddy. It is not 14. your 14. 14. Okay, Come 14. On. He's not a great okay. Dane or anything. Come okay. On. I'm just saying. And they got pills now. So maybe 16. Okay. But, but you're, okay, I know. you're not going to be here for mean. 80 years. Yeah. Right? I may not even be here, be here for 80 years. And I'm sitting here watching you not enjoy your 16 because you worry about whether or not dogs get adopted. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I, it's it's like these these systems that are beyond the dog. You should just worry about your day-to-day. Your, or, yeah, because it's, you know, like, it's, it's crazy to, to, to kind of look at it like that. But it's like... That's what that made me feel when you just said that. It's like, man, like it's a lot of shit that, you know, like I always looked at people weird who would dedicate their life to making sure that a certain kind of dolphin doesn't go extinct. Mm. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? That could be their that could be their particular goal though. But it's time for this dolphin to go because God's gonna drop a new one. God got a new one coming from the depths of fucking uh inner earth a dog ass new dolphin it's clear it lights up yeah. you know what i'm saying and 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 here you are like no we need this tiger it's like yo i got a whole new tiger coming some whole new shit that, that you can't even think of evolution is gonna happen nothing has ever tried to stop evolution in the past like shit came and went natural selection always happened but here we are fucking eggheads we stopped our own evolution we did stop our own evolution with we all kind them. of shit, with 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 frequency, with pills, with with, with all. We stopped our evolution. Mm-hmm. We we are now engineering ourselves. Yeah. Well, by what that, traits we like. That right there is what I'm talking about. When it's like, imagine if your dog woke up every morning and made some T-shirts that said "Save the Dogs," and they went out and tried to save the dogs. You like this motherfucker? Watch my house, please. <laughs> Watch the goddamn! I, I'm sorry, but save the dogs. The dog need to be saved. It's a crazy what they're doing to the dog. These are only puppies. Look at them. It's like, bro. I mean, that is a way to look at it. There are whole churches who are just like, don't get involved in politics. Mm. Like God. Well, first off, no church is supposed to be directly involved in politics, but whatever. Yeah, you know, these That's preachers nice. be like, no. grease my palm, and I will. Yeah. Spread your message. But really, a lot of them are like, don't vote, don't do anything. What will happen will happen, and we just stay out of it. Mm. And that's a way to think about it. But then you have to think, what about the churches who are actively involved in politics? Like these uh, religious zealots that we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. So do we stop them? These are the ones that are paying attention to and trying to... They're paying attention for it opportunities to try to make fetch happen as it pertains to revelations and the end of the world mm-hmm. and then they get pissed off when it doesn't happen because we're not supposed to know when it's going to happen we're not so everybody's like 12 21 2012 did, did you guys and it's like it didn't happen of course not because i was on fucking youtube the end of the world is not going to be on youtube the end of the world is not going to be where we get where we get to go to costco you think a couple of niggas gonna go live at the end of the world because they got a 24 case of uncrustables and God could be like, oh, y'all good. Y'all got your Uncrustables. All right, good. Nigga, it's over for everybody. It's nothing we could do. If, if, if it's a mass extinction for real, meteorite hit this bitch, it's like, we could be like, yeah, the bah, gone. Like, my car fucked up probably. Well, remember we talked about 535 AD and how a lot of people think that the Bible has already come to pass because Rome ended and all the prophecies were fulfilled because in that year, 535, the sun went away and there was huge amounts of cannibalism. Oh, my God. Imagine us watching a goddamn rerun of the news. <laughs> That's what this shit is like. Imagine watching a rerun of the news. In other news, the world's going to end today. we like, ah! You look outside, it's like, nigga, that shit happened eons ago. Eons. And we're watching the news like, oh, go get some milk and some eggs. This shit is probably on autopilot. We probably got a good 60,000 years in this bitch of good peace. Good piece. It already happened. Man. That's what it says. Y'all out here fucked up. These AIs trying to help us flip burgers. 
and milk cow shit that we shouldn't be doing anyway. We, we should be doing other shit. Think about you. If you just want to be playing in the cow's titties, or if you just want to be doing prostate exams, say that. Because the bottom line is AI is here to help make shit better. You don't got to be digging in motherfuckers' asses anymore, sir. We have a machine for that. But if you want to put your goddamn latex glove on and deal with Meek and them. What did Meek do? What am I missing? Man, I don't know if it's real or not, but it's this audio that is like this, it, it, like hearing it will disturb your sexuality. All right. We can't. Uh, we're yeah, not we, we're not playing that shit on my Meek podcast, Mill. but it's. But it's, it's, it's a video and, and, and it's audio and they're saying it's, it's, it's Diddy having sex with me and it's it's crazy, prison-y. Like, it sounds like... Maybe they're doing a ritual. See, and that's what people say. They're, they're talking about these humiliation rituals and... I mean, there there's real things to that because people who practice black magic, which don't ever practice black magic, but it has to be pain associated with that because a pain is a strong, powerful emotion and it imprints. I'm not. I have no idea what so Meek Mill did. So why can't you give somebody a purple nurple? You probably could. Yeah. The fuck is somebody is just because you want to have fun, you freak. You could easily be like. Turn it up! We got him! Like, ah! And then it's like, that's, you know, nigga floating in the air, like, ah! He's done it! But no, nah, no, nah, they got the, they got the, they got to jump down your drawers, huh? It's a wild game! Jesus Christ. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, um, three body problem. The three body problem. I'm on episode seven. Okay. So, from what I gather, up until seven, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, turn this off now. What I gather is that very intelligently, an alien race has sent the technology ahead to prepare for their arrival. Mm -hmm. What they're also doing is trying to stagnate the human race's intelligence by killing off all of their top scientists. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because what they realize is that it's going to take them 400 years to reach Earth. And in that 400 years, Earth could evolve. Will probably evolve. Way ahead of what they're capable of because they're on the run. So they're not even on their planet to be able to begin cooking up new ways of being. They're just coming here based on where they're at. They stopped where they're at. Let me sum up for the people at home who have no idea what we're talking about. Three Body Problem is a Netflix show, which is based on a book. Yeah. And basically what is happening is that there is an alien race that is in a three-body star system. So there's a planet and I believe two, two stars. Sun. Two suns. Two suns. Mm -hmm. And that is an old problem that's impossible to solve. So basically their civilization keeps getting destroyed. They send out a message to Earth that's like, yo, can we come there? And this lady who was um, lived through Mao's Cultural Revolution in China, and, right? And, and but her job was to decipher foreign signals mm -hmm. and decide whether or not um, they were either real or something that needed to be responded to. A response came back from this planet, and it said, "Hey, listen, I'm one of the good people from this planet. I'm one of the people with with genuine like empathy." Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, do not answer back to this because these motherfuckers do not play. And if you answer back, they're coming. Yep. And it probably was such a heroic feat for that alien to make that call. If Netflix is smart, Three Body Problem Season 2 should be from the flip of how that alien got to send that message to say, don't do it. Smart. That would be a good show. Well, you know, that's why I EP things. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what I like about it is they did a two-part attack. So, yeah, they reached out, and this lady very idiotically spoke for the world. The whole world. She decided for everybody. Hey, y'all, come through. We have snacks. Told them about the snacks. 
these motherfuckers, as soon as they got the message, they began to... And I don't even understand how they're physically coming to Earth to give them this stuff if they're not going to be here for 400 years. Now, I haven't got to the end, so I don't understand. Mm. I'm on episode seven, and, and, and I'm mid-seven. Shout out to my wife. She keep falling asleep. Usually it's me, but this time it's her. So I'm like... Because they have these video game headsets mm -hmm. that they give everybody, and these video games are different catastrophes that happen on their planet. What they're trying to do is vet the minds because what they know is this. We know that the catastrophes happen. The catastrophes happen. We know that we can't avoid them. There are two things that you can do. You can try to fix the catastrophes, or you can save the people. Once they realize that you can save the people, the people who chose to save the people become like, uh, you know, uh, their new employees. Or, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are now our new employee. <laughs> and so they basically, um, these are the ones that, are th th that they're going to use to vet the rest of the planet to help them, you know, like you understand why we have to do what we have to do. So you all can quote unquote be saved when mm. we come in. But then they sent the message that said you are bugs. Well, because that guy was talking because that to them. Guy, right. And so here's the thing. Uh, that human. What I'm realizing about head. this show above anything else is the fact that the reality is that the people who get a chance to interface with anything extraterrestrial on this planet are not asking everybody. Mm -mm. Like, 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 like they're not considering all of us at all to the point where it's like, like, imagine I wouldn't even like they, they could, I wouldn't want them to come talk to me. I'm going to say some bullshit. <laughs> And they're going to go back like, this is what they own. And they're going to come back and all the aliens going to be sagging their sweatpants and shit. And go up, you know what I'm saying? Who the fuck these ghetto ass they're like, what the fuck? Where the ribs at? You know what I'm saying? It's like, like it, wow. Like, and so, yeah. And so, but just to be clear, interesting enough, this story involves a woman in the military who is in high up intelligence and has had her ideas taken from her, which set the stage for her to not want to be able to share any information because she was being devalued as a woman. Mm -hmm. So that added a whole nother dynamic to it. And, and I don't want to leave that part out because it's very important. Like, you know, if, if they would have listened to her and heard her ideas as her ideas, let her take the fall, or and then she would have felt more inclined to be like, hey guys, this is us. But the bottom line is, they blew her off. They stole her ideas. They stole her research. And so she knew what to look for, and she found it, and she was like, well, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, and so that's just like, treat people right because they could fuck everything up. You know what I'm saying? Number one. And then... Um, We're inclined to treat people poorly, though. Mm. That's what happened in 300. Remember 300, the movie? Yeah. And then they treated that guy. Um, they kicked that man. The, the disabled person. You remember the disabled one? He wanted to oh, be a soldier, yeah, and they yeah, said, "No, yeah, you yeah. can't lift your arm for the phalanx." Right. So he betrayed them. Yeah. If you haven't seen Three Hundred by now, I don't think I should have to do a spoiler. Alert. No, no, Was no, that no. Twenty no. years but ago. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. If they let his little shriveled up, weird Cheeto body have an ass into the war, and he couldn't hold his shield up to do the turtle shell for them, then they would have died anyway. Well, exactly. People have to acknowledge that they're fucking failures. It's okay. Go be a cook. Make some potatoes. You little chitlin. Like get out of here. I hated that part. Like, dude, like, who the fuck do you think you are? They won't let me lift the shield. <laughs> like, I can't believe it. It's always an ugly hater. Well, that's... They're going to be over here in a tiny canal. You can kill them. And then what he said? Well, you, you can get all these virgins. You think these virgins want to lose their virginity to a goddamn uh, crawfish? Like, no, nah, nobody, bro, your best bet, like I said last week, is to go find the hoes in your bag or the dudes in your bag. My mom got mad at me. Don't call them hoes. Don't call them bitches. Sorry, mom. Find That's who's in your bag. Go to the, the decrepit department of the hospital and nestle in. It's like five, six decrepit women over there for you. He doesn't want them. He wants the pretty virgins. Hey, guess what? You got to stay in your bag. Stay in your bag. Old ass women with them hairs coming out their neck. Get you a good, hard working Lester from 227 looking ass nigga and, and sit down. 
Make him some beans. Feed that mustache. Feed your mustache. He might like. It's like, man, come on, man. Everybody's outside their bag, and it's people inside their pocket getting to where they gotta go. Hood, hood, cause they in their bag. And then that little dude for three hundred, man. Who's the actor that played him? Oh, let me look up. Can I see the um? Oh yeah, the here power? you go. Cause I don't, I don't ever want to work with this actor ever. I don't even know. Was he CGI? I hope so. <laughs> Whoever voiced him, I don't ever want to work with them. Leah, ever, ever, ever. I'm never working in this town again. I forgot about them and Joffrey uh, Lannister. Mm. Or Joffrey, uh, uh, he wasn't a Lannister. He was a damn uh, Baratheon. No, it was a uh, Lannister, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, but he was. Oh, he but, was, he was um, but he, but he nah. was a Baratheon, though. What, was it Baratheon? Yeah, but who was the other guy who was into Sansa and did the whole torture? That guy was worse. Oh, that guy sucked. Oh, uh, 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 um, Battle of the Bastards, Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, he's another one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Help you get stabbed in the pee hole <laughs> with a goddamn, <laughs> with a piece of glass. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He Look looks at like him. Like a normal. He must have. Uh... Look at him. He, he, like, he, he only drinks spoiled milks. <laughs> <laughs> you have any milks? Are they warm? Yeah, I take a spoiled milk. It's 5'11. Yeah, he's not a short guy. He's not ugly either, or at least when he was young. He's not super ugly. Maya has a type because this motherfucker ugly as hell to me. No, no, this, this guy? He's, his, he's mid. His he's face, average. His face. But but you could tell what he's gonna grow into. Like those those features look like uh like somebody built him. He like Picasso drew him. <laughs> he's average. Most people are average. Hey, I mean, yeah. hey, everybody's average. I get that. But look at what he grew into though. It's like, man, come on, man, come out of character. This is him now. Eh, he's still average. Go to the picture that was right there where he looked like uh not that one. Oh, this one? Oh, he's yeah. making a face. Okay, we'll go to the one where he's not making a face. The the the, the second one? one from the left. Yeah, yeah. He looks like y'all got any spoiled milk? <laughs> <laughs> he has a, he's a lizard look to him. Yeah. But most people who don't live in LA look normal. We gotta be nicer to people. They're just him. mid. They're look, average. Look at him kissing that dude. Mm hmm. Well, he Ooh. looks better in this. He has a he looks better. Ooh, look at this, Maya. Yes. I, I'm in trouble because I'm defending average looking people. No, not at all. He like average looking niggas too. Look. See, man, look. No, I don't that's, think that's not him. That's not his family. But he do kind of look like him though. That's fucked up for him. And his wife look like him too. God damn. That, we that, don't know who those people that's are. That's a scary looking family, boy. <laughs> God damn, why you bringing them up? I don't want to say that about nobody, man. That's That's not fair, man. You know, we're all ugly sometimes. Bad lighting, bad sleep. Yeah. You know, things can go wrong. Things can go wrong, man. Shit. But I will say in Three Body Problem, the lady that decided that she hated humanity enough that we needed to be saved, a lot of people feel like that on their worst day. But what are you asking somebody to come and do? No, exactly. No, like, she's like, evil. We need to be saved. Like, what are you? What are you talking about, Nancy? What if you were being burned as a witch and the aliens asked you, are humans worth it? You'd be like, no, humans ain't shit. You said you're well, getting, if you're getting burned as a witch by the Inquisition. So we've treated each other badly for a while. But who's just, getting interviewed while they're getting burned? I'm just saying. How do you like a, people? I hate them. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I hate these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, all right. Back to you in the studio. She hates people. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You made my point better than me. And a lot of people, nothing goes wrong in their life and they still hate people. Mm, that don't mean, but you are people though. I, like, I'm not finna, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, God. Yeah, that's why she's She should have typed back, it's ghetto here. <laughs> it's ghetto here. They'll be like, no, we'll come fix it. Yo, the sea peoples. So that's a migration issue. So this is a three body problem is a migration issue. You know, in about 1200 BC, there was this, something called the Bronze Age collapse, where the whole of the the Troy probably happened around this time. You said the whole D Detroit, Troy. Oh, I'm about to say like we was definitely in that bitch going crazy. <laughs> but um, 
the Bronze Age collapse was basically like all these civilizations around the Mediterranean just completely collapsed. Mm. And people are like, why did that happen? And from the records, they say it was the sea people. And it was these people of migration probably that came over the sea and just, they were just like, we need a new place to be. And so we're where you are. So that's one of the biggest mysteries of history is who were the sea people and what did they do to these civilizations? I don't know Egypt what I would barely do, made man. it. I used to hate when somebody used to come and sit at the lunch table with, with me and my friends. Like, who the fuck are you? And I used to, I used to, I used to fuck up my whole lunch. I was like, I see what this lame ass motherfucker right here, man. Fucking up. Man, move. God damn. We'll be freestyling this shit, man. Do not get in our cypher. <laughs> it's like, I can't imagine somebody just coming to you and just, yeah, I, I live here now. It's like, man, we got to, we just, it's just time to fight. Yeah. It's time to fight, buddy. I'm sorry. That's where the Gauls and the Romans, the, the Celts and the Romans, they fought because of a migration. Mm. We're having migration issues all over the world. They, it leads to massive wars. And people who say otherwise, like we're just going to welcome them with open arms, have never studied history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But we're not out here building new continents, neither. We need to take some trash and build a big-ass continent. Trash continent. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Like we could really build a trash continent. Yeah, we could. I think we could. China's building islands in the South China Sea. Build a trash continent. What are they building it with? Like rocks and shit? I think it's like a lot of plastic, a lot of rocks, yeah. Man, well, we need to build a dog-ass trash. Just Pepsi bottles on one. And then, like you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, you know, like condom wrapper. You know what I'm saying? Like a bunch of condom wrappers. Then uh, just, like, separate it good so you can know where you at. Like, <laughs> be on the beach. Like, like, look at all these rabbits. <laughs> just on the beach. So there's a China Island tracker. And they're like, hey, look at these people building these islands. That, I mean, what are they using them for? Uh, military. So that they can have more territory in the South China Sea because they're going to try to... Damn. Classic. Make a move. Hmm. All right, y'all. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready to go, man, for real. This just it's like this should be blowing my brain up like what they were there building islands for their military bases. It'd be a shame if somebody blew them bitches up. <laughs> be a shame if something happened to them. They got, right, a lot like, of them. they got a lot of islands. Okay, cool. Y'all, oh, y'all island up. Anytime somebody give you this, this kind of compliment, but you know something, oh, y'all got a lot of shit. <laughs> oh, y'all just, y'all just island up. Oh, middle island. This is nice as fuck. This one's a money island. Oh, shit. Money island. It does look like money island, though. It got a lot of nice stuff on it. Green. Yeah, it'd be a motherfucking shame, wouldn't it? A goddamn shame. Anyway, y'all know what it is, man. This has been the CP Podcast. It's always the questions, never the answers. Nothing ever gets solved because nothing ever gets fucking solved. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? When y'all start solving the world's issues, then maybe we'll solve a goddamn episode. But until then, leave us the fuck alone. My name is CP, Maya, and Leah. Hello. And we out this mug, man. Peace.